testing testing one two three hi youtube welcome back to my channel today i have something that is a bit of a surprise i i don't know you can probably tell by my face but i've had a very very exhausting day and i am working on one of my projects and i just realized that i have not uploaded in uh well over three weeks and i just decided okay i'm gonna do something no matter how small no matter how easy it is i'm going to do this edit it and maybe not even edit it and just post directly so i have three routers and you can probably see it in my uh from my screen and um i've set them up like this this is just for illustration purposes and i have one router a service provider router and r2 and I've labeled uh, them accordingly. And R1 and R2 have this 16.11 network or 11.0 network. And let me make this just slightly bigger. There we go. How is it? There we go. Okay. R1 and R2 are connected on their G0001 interfaces and uh, ISP and R2 are connected, you know, in this network. So each circle is an individual network. And when you think of routers, you should think that each interface on a router is an individual network. So you can think of R1 as, I don't know, a, a, a headquarter router. Then it goes via the service provider, which is the internet, basically. Uh, and then it arrives at, uh, you know, from San Francisco to Tokyo. So you can think of SP as the internet, essentially. And I'm doing this lab with the goal of just providing a little bit of insight into static routes. So. The IP address of G000 interface on R1 is dot one, which is 172.16.11.1. Slash 30 just means there's two IP addresses for use in this network. So a slash 30 means two IP addresses. The slash just means what is the size of the network. And slash 30 means there's just two usable IP uh, addresses in this network. All right. And then I have created loopback addresses on the router at the edge themselves um, to simulate a local area network. And there's also a local area network here. So a loopback interface is just a virtual interface within the router itself. Um, you can use it to for various purposes like testing your TCP IP stack and if you can ping your loopback address it means your network stack is working as intended um, so yeah let's get into it so now the point I wanted to make with this video is to show you why uh, dynamic routing is super important so right now all these routers are connected as in this topology and let's dive straight into R1, right? I have done the interface configurations just to make this video short. So let's dive, oops, let's dive into R1. Is this it? No. Is this you? No. R1, great. So now we're in R1. Let's say show IP interface brief just to verify that yes, I have given it an IP address of 11.1. It is up, it is up. And a loopback address of 10.1.1.1 as here. So now let's look at the routing table, show IP route. The routing table essentially just shows the networks uh, this router is aware of, right? Let me shrink this and minimize this. Too small. OK. 
okay so r1 so basically we can see here that r1 is aware of 10.1.1.0 which is its own loopback address and it says it's connected directly connected which makes sense local means it exists on one of the router's own interfaces that's what l means local local means oh this is one of my own interfaces right and as you can see it's loopback zero and g00 that has this uh, slash 32 right so this is all r1 knows it can't see anything else even though it's connected to to r to sp right to service provider so r1 is not aware of this by default right so if i were to try and ping 10.2.2 dot one it's not going to work right for obvious reasons it doesn't know how to get there this is all it knows in its in its routing table this is all it's aware of and this can be a problem now but we can create static routes so but let's see can r1 ping SP's G000 interface, which is IP address is 16.11.2. It should, it should, because it says connected here. So let's, let's, let's just try it. Ping 172.16.11.2. That's a success. So R1 says, yes, I know how to get to this guy's interface. Like I said before, every uh, interface on a router is a different network. Okay. Let's go into SP now. Let's ping. From SP, we're trying to ping this network 10.2.2.1. SP also doesn't know how to get to this network, right? And I'll show you why. Show IP route, like show me your routing table. This is all that SP knows. It knows these two networks, 16.11 and 16.31. That's all it knows. It doesn't know how to get to anywhere else, right? So this is where static routing comes into play you know it's static routing is the uh, old school way of doing this so what I'm going to say is I wish I could pin this Let me put this here yes perfect what I'm going to say is I uh, configure terminal IP route what I'm going to tell R1 is that if the network you're trying to go to, that is the destination that you're trying to go to, if it's not in your routing table, ask this guy. You understand? Ask this guy. Because R1 doesn't even know how to reach this network. All R1 knows is this circle and this guy. So I'm telling it that if you don't know where to go, ask SP. And what is SP from R1's perspective? SP is 172.16.11.2. 172.16.11.2. This is what we call a default route. It, tell, it basically just says, if I don't know how to get to the network, send it to this guy, right? <clears throat> so now SP knows to, uh, when it receives traffic it, that needs to go to this network, SP can't forward it, but does SP Actually, let's find out. If I ping 
this interface of SP, this dot two interface, will we get a response from R1? So let's see. Ping one seven two dot sixteen dot thirty one dot two. Oh yes, we get a reply because SP does know how to get back to R1. But if we ping R2's G000 interface, which is 172.16.31.1, which is this interface, right? Look now, we fail. Ping doesn't get replied. Why? Because R2 has no idea how to get back to R1. If we look at R2's uh, uh, routing table, naval, show IP route. There's no such thing in its table. It doesn't know how to get there. It knows how to get to 2.2.1 and it knows how to get to 16.31 and 16.1. It knows only knows this network. So again, we tried to ping R2, but R2 couldn't respond because R2 did not know how to go back. So now on R2, we need to tell it how to get back to R1, right? So on R2, we're gonna do the same thing, IP route. If I, and we're going to do a default route, which says if the destination is not in my table, which this is the table, I need to send it to SP. SP should know how to get to this destination. So. 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 Now I have a default route. Now R2 says, okay, I've received this ping echo request. I don't know how to get back to this address. It's not in my routing table. So I send it to SB. SB should know. So now let's try the ping again. Ping 172. 16.31.1 so from r1 i'm pinging r2 now r2 should know how to get back to r1 and as you can see it's it's a success now this is imagine this trouble we had to go to in just a tiny uh, network like this imagine if in your organization you had a hundred routers static routing is not going to be fun to do it's not gonna be fun so I'm gonna call it here and I I hope this video was insightful I hope uh, you know it helped you understand a little bit about how static routes and default routes uh, work and yeah thanks for tuning in see you on the next one bye